Hello and welcome back to another episode of Details and Deep Dives. I am Marcus and I am excited today to talk about a topic that I think is very important and unfortunately I think it's one of the most overlooked aspects of car care that there is. Paint and surface decontamination. You're thinking, what in the world do I need to decontaminate my car for? What are these things that are contaminating your car? <laughs> Why didn't you know about it? Uh, and what you can do to see if it is an issue and then how to take care of it. Uh, even a brand new car, when those vehicles are produced, they're going through a factory setting, then they're typically going out and sitting in parking lots in industrial areas. Then they're getting loaded onto rail cars and it's gonna go through shipping containers and you know all these different industrial areas where little fine itty bitty bits of metal shavings or iron, also known as ferrous particles, can end up landing on the vehicle and then bonding to the surface. That is where the term bonded contaminants was born. Uh, and what it refers to, to understand bonded contaminants or contamination, what does that mean compared to you know, just dirt and grime and you know, bird droppings and stuff that you wash off of your car when you wash your car? Uh, the difference is when you wash your car, those unbonded contaminants will typically come off with a little bit of water, maybe some soap, and maybe com combining in uh, a wash mitt, right? The bonded contaminants, other than the iron, you've also got tree sap, uh, you've got paint, and that can be both overspray, let's say they're painting a building near you, a fence, something with a paint sprayer, and little particles travel through the air and land on your vehicle, and you can get an overspray, a, a mist. The other is simply driving down the road, sometimes you drive over fresh paint or spilled paint or something and it can splatter up along the side of your car. Um, you know, these are all examples of a bonded contaminant that's not likely to come off through a normal wash process. All of those bonded contaminants will make your paint or glass rough to the point that when it gets bad enough and you rub your hand over it, or a towel even, you can hear it actually make almost like a scratching sound, uh, or you'll feel a microfiber towel actually catch a little bit. Uh, you could feel something tugging at that towel as you're wiping over what is a freshly clean surface. Why is it doing that, right? It should be smooth. All these bonded contaminants as they're forming on your vehicle, they're gonna be between either your paint or your glass and whatever protection you're trying to put on there. So if you wanna put on a wax, a sealant, or a coating of some kind, those are all engineered to bond to a specific surface, let's say paint. If you have this other material contaminating that surface, it's between the paint and the, the product that you're trying to apply to it. So therefore, it's not gonna bond properly. The other thing, and this is a more technical topic and I won't deep dive onto it right now, but there's something called surface tension. And it has to do with basically uh, the way that uh, oils, waters, liquids, whatever, interact with the surface, how it is pushed off or pulled onto that surface. Uh, typical protection for your vehicle creates a, a, a specific type of surface tension that's intended to push stuff away. That's how it helps to keep it clean, right? When you have this contamination on there, it dramatically can alter the surface tension and reduce the performance and effectiveness of waxes, sealants, or coatings. The other thing is, and a lot of people do not realize the severity of this, and I will go into this uh, in another uh, deep dive video, uh, but it will change the color of your car. You're saying, nah, I don't believe that. You know, these little specks on there, or whatever you're talking about is so small, I never even knew it was there. It's not changing the color of my car. It does, it, it can, it will, and I have proven this uh, with uh, measuring devices, paint color measuring devices uh, in multiple multi-million dollar body shop in environments. Point being, it will reduce the clarity of your paint. It can affect the gloss, the perceived gloss, how clean it looks, what it feels like, and makes your product not perform as well. So that is why you want to decontaminate a vehicle. And the longer all those protective products last, the better your vehicle is gonna be protected, the longer it's gonna last and stay in good condition, right? So it all makes sense that why this is such an important thing, but often so overlooked because people just literally don't know that they can or need to do what we're talking about. So let's start with the basics. What is the primary way that you uh, decontaminate a vehicle? Well, the number one thing that people are familiar with is clay. 
Uh, this is the Smooth Surface Clay Kit. It's a kit, so it's got some clay bars in it. It has a towel and it has a, a bottle of Quick Detailer, which is the lubricant that you use when you're using clay on a surface. Now, what is clay? Clay is, uh, in the simplest sense, it is an abrasive product. Well, many people do not realize that, but it is abrasive. Think like the abrasives in a compound or, or an abrasive polish. Uh, but it is very fine. And it's engineered so that most people don't even, when you feel it and put it in your hand and touch it, it does not seem like something that is, is abrasive. In fact, you know, I'll take out some of the, the professional grade uh, clay. You know, this is, uh, you know, it feels and looks almost like Play-Doh. But this is an abrasive product, uh, and it definitely uh, is going to do its job, and it's, it's fairly firm and, and stiff. You know, you, you can pull it apart and, and refold it into each other. But the point of, uh, of clay is that it slides back and forth over a surface, whether that's glass or paint or some other smooth surface, and it abrades away with those abrasives uh, and grabs and pulls away the material that is not part of the paint or not part of the glass and it, by, by cutting it off in itty bitty small little increments. And that is why you need to use lubricant so that that clay, which is ordinarily pretty darn grabby, can slide over that surface. Now there are varying degrees. Consumer clay is generally, uh, it, very often you're gonna find it in white or, or like yellow, it's, it's less aggressive. Color doesn't necessarily mean anything because different brands do different things, um, but it is, Less aggressive, uh, think of it as a higher grit sandpaper. Don't think of it as really sandpaper, much finer than what you're thinking of, but that's a general concept. Um, and then you get into, you know, the mild professional clay is more aggressive than the, than the uh, consumer grade clay. And then you have an aggressive version of the pro uh, that you would use on something that's really on there. And frankly, uh, you know, in the hands of a pro, they know when they can use a more aggressive product. Uh, you would do that when time is of the essence and or you know you're gonna come back and perform a, a paint correction, it doesn't really matter if you do some light marring to the surface if you're gonna come back and polish it out or compound it out anyway. Um, so these are your traditionally known solutions for all those different bonded contaminants that we talked about. Um, in more recent years, there's also been this synthetic clay. Now these are basically microfiber towels that have different uh, degrees of aggressiveness of a synthetic, almost rubbery type material with abrasive in it that is sprayed on there. Um, you can also find this synthetic clay in other form factors. Uh, the reason I had the polisher here was that uh, you can actually get a disc that you stick onto your hook and loop backing plate and use a polisher at low speed with lots of lubrication. And that will actually take all the, you know, the physical work out of it. And that will abrade away. And so you can do it that way. They also make a wash mitt style. Um, and you know, and there's just these different form factors where you can find uh, this synthetic clay. Uh, they also have them on small applicators as well. But they perform the same general function, just the high level thing to know. Usually, generally speaking, Synthetic clay will mar a surface more easily than uh, traditional clay. Um, it has a little bit to do with what the material is and also the fact that there's nowhere for stuff to go when it gets between this and the paint as you're cleaning. Whereas the clay itself, it pushes into the clay. So that material that you've removed is less likely than to scratch the surface. Um, so there's a couple different factors here, but also the material itself also tends to be a little bit more aggressive. Now the, the upside to the synthetic is that it's typically quicker. And if you were to drop this and or just use it on a vehicle and get a bunch of stuff on it, you can rinse it off and keep going. Whereas you drop a traditional clay bar, I'm gonna let you in on a secret here. These are living objects. Clay has a mind of its own. It is like a kamikaze. Its goal in life is to crash that clay down onto that ground as fast as possible and waste your hard earned money. It's true. So uh, you think I'm crazy or kidding. I kind of am not because clay is a slippery little sucker and it's gonna wanna find its way to the ground. I'm telling you that. So there's a couple pro tips there. One, never use all your clay at once. Uh, break it into small chunks. So if and when it does manage to escape your grasp, and it will eventually, uh, you're not out all your clay, pro tip number one. Two, just really pay attention to what you're doing. The second you get tired, especially bumpers, mirrors, 
uh, vertical surfaces, man, that stuff is just excited for you to try and clean that because it knows there's a high probability you're gonna screw up and drop it on the ground. Don't do it. So go slow, take your time. Uh, the other way that you'll drop it is um, if you're working an area and you spray the, the quick detailer, you know, like Meguiar's M34, you can actually get both of these, by the way, at Harbor Freight. That's where I work, that's how I know that. Um, some of these other products you can find at other places. But um, if you go to the edge of where you have the, the lubrication and you hit a dry spot, it will grab. So if you're flying really fast and you're trying to go super fast and you hit that dry spot, it might pull it out of your hand and it might go jump on the ground and kill itself. Just telling you, you drop the clay, you toss it in the trash. You're gonna pick up dirt and stuff off the ground and you're gonna scratch the bejesus out of the rest of your car. Not worth it, don't do it. Just be careful, be smart, toss it when it gets nasty. You also wanna fold the clay into itself every so often as you're using it. You can look at it and literally see it start to get dirty. Um, and so that's when you wanna keep folding it to try and get a cleaner edge or a cleaner surface as you're working. All right, so those are the mechanical options for decontaminating, and these are gonna be effective on above surface contamination. Tree sap, paint, uh, and iron oxide as far as it is above the surface. Works great on glass too, by the way. Claying glass is a phenomenal thing. If you've never done it, do it and you'll love it. Uh, it'll feel very different once you've clayed your glass if you've never done it. But then the other end of the spectrum down here is you're talking about iron removers. Uh, there's various names. Um, the kind of the Kleenex name, if you will, of this space is Iron X. Uh, they really were the ones that kind of came out first many years ago with a product like that. Now there's all kinds of other options that are out there. Uh, as far as what Meguiar's has, um, I was actually there at Meguiar's when all three of these products were created. I drove uh, a lot of uh, all of this guy and a lot of that guy and a little bit of that guy because uh, that was a consumer product. But Basically, I'll just quick unpack those. The point of an iron removing product, back in the day, and the only thing I don't have up here really to demonstrate is acid. Uh, back in the day when I was a kid and I worked at a dealership, um, I'm aging myself right now, but in the industry at that time, we used acid to remove iron particles off of vehicles. It's very common practice. In fact, it's still used at uh, dealerships, some auctions, you know, high volume places where they're cheap and they're not willing to spend the money for safer, better materials for their workers. Um, you know, these acids are very common to, to remove these iron particles. The downside to acid is acid. You can cause damage uh, putting it on certain surfaces. If it sits there too long or gets too hot, and frankly, I still to this day can still, I can practically taste this stuff. When you breathe it in, man, it is nasty. And you're coughing up a lung and it's just not good for you. So um, I avoid using acid on, on vehicles. It's just not my preference. Um, there's hardcore guys out there. They're gonna mock me for that, I'm sure. Uh, you know, and they love using their cheap acid. Acid's very cheap. That's the pro to the acid, by the way. And if you put on protection equipment, you know, that, that properly, um, you know, blocks the, the vapors, it's, it's perfectly fine to use acid in the hands of a professional. They know what you're doing. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Um, the color changing uh, aspect, you know, these products change color as they remove the iron. Now, part of it is a little bit of a neat, you know, gimmicky parlor trick, right? You know, it's cool. You spray on this clear stuff and then it turns your wheels or your paint like wine colored. It's amazing. It's actually really fascinating to watch it. But there's actually a purpose to that and that is it gives you a visual indicator that there's still iron there to remove. Why does that matter? Because uh, depending on the contaminant, how severe it is, what the condition of the paint was, how below surface those contaminants are, uh, it's very likely that you may need to use multiple treatments or that color change will give you an indication that there's still some below surface that maybe you're not feeling above the surface. And we'll throw in a, a pro tip here. This is like a piece of cellophane type plastic. Uh, you can use a, a plastic bag, like a lunch bag, a Ziploc bag, something like that. Now you take one of these and you put your hand inside of it and then use something like final inspection, a quick detailer. Uh, for this, you could use water or you know soapy water from your wash bucket or something like that. Put that on your surface and then you rub your hand on it. The plastic actually magnifies uh, what you feel. Like it's wild how big those bumps feel uh, when you use a plastic bag. And the reason that's a good thing to try is that there have been times where I test it with my bare hand and I'm like, okay, I got it all off. I try it with a baggie and oh, nope, that's an indicator. I have not gotten all of it off. So the chemical approach will get down into the paint 
and it will chemically remove this iron or ferrous based material. Change colors in the process. I recommend using a wash mitt with any of these to agitate. And the reason is you'll use less product, save you some money, uh, and it's more effective and it keeps it from drying on the surface too. So I use like a microfiber wash mitt to agitate it on the surface and that way I'm able to get more bang for my buck with my chemicals and uh, spread it around a little bit. This guy actually foams up like crazy and it actually creates a good amount of slickness. Um, the difference here going to this guy is that this product is not as aggressive of an iron removing formula. Um, it's closer to all wheel cleaner in terms of iron removal, but it's built for paint. And the main difference is that has a package built into it for lubrication so that you can use it with a synthetic clay uh, material and that at the same time. And what that does is it combines mechanical and chemical iron removal at once. The other thing is, let's say you need to get more than iron off of your vehicle. You've got some sap or something else on there. If you combine these two steps into one, that can work at getting your below surface iron contamination and this can work at removing your above surface other contamination. So it's kind of a, a time saver, a one-two punch, uh, and you know it's a nice process for a declayer to use. And then the last guy up there, the Ultimate All-Wheel Cleaner. Uh, this is a product that was the first color-changing iron remover that Meguiar's launched, and that one was dedicated for wheels specifically. So it was not meant to be used on paint, but as detailers do, we use things off-label and it became a very popular cost-effective option. It's around nine or 10 bucks a bottle. Um, and it's a pretty good bang for the buck and it's a very good iron remover. The downside of that product for using it on paint is that it is thick. So when you spray that on a car, it tends to just go and just stick like a ball of snot and it doesn't really move around particularly well. Whereas uh, these products were engineered to be thinner to spread around and cover more surface areas. So you'll probably use less product with these than with the Ultimate All-Wheel Cleaner on paint. This is the strongest, and these are again in the same realm. It's just that has a wheel cleaning package and this has a lubrication package to use it with, um, with synthetic clay. Um, this is also, you'll notice the name is Wheel and Paint Iron Decon. It is equally effective as a dedicated wheel cleaner is phenomenal. This will go toe to toe with a straight up, very aggressive acid uh, for, for cleaning really neglected wheels, uh, but it's pH neutral. So it's a phenomenal option if you have expensive exotic brakes or wheels to have a much safer alternative to having to use an aggressive uh, acid or alkaline wheel or wheel and tire cleaner. The tip uh, I'm gonna give you on these guys, if you're using it outdoors, Make sure it's not a hot day and not in direct sun. If that gets on rubber trim, window trim, plastics, it might uh, lighten it a little bit and make it look kind of gray uh, instead of black. It's, it's really not something you want to get hot and let dwell on plastic. If you get a little bit incidentally, you can rinse it off and, and you'll be fine. Um, but just avoid doing it in a lot of direct sun. Um, as far as do I need to use this and this, and if so, in what order? Best approach, in my opinion, Chemical decontamination first, uh, saves your shoulders, <laughs> saves you time, and it will get the huge bulk of everything off. I will then come back and hit it with clay of some kind mechanically, uh, if I so choose, if, the appropriate, if it's appropriate for that situation. You can certainly combine these, because remember, this will not remove some things like tree sap or paint. Um, whereas a, a clay mechanical you know, will. So that's where you'd wanna combo uh, an iron remover. Now, the other way you can go about it is you can clay first and then check your work. And I would recommend, uh, particularly if you're gonna be putting some kind of a coating on your surface, to use a chemical iron remover in the event that you remove the above surface but not the below surface, that chemical is gonna be able to then finish the job and get what's left underneath. So, you know, if you're really being thorough and doing a high-end job, you can chemical, mechanical, chemical. Anyway, that is paint contamination above surface and below surface and some of the most popular methods for removing it quickly explained for you, quickly in my world. Uh, if you've got any more questions, leave them in the comments below. I will be doing more product specific deep dives uh, and deeper how to's in the future on some of these products. So if there's any particular ones you'd like me to focus on, uh, put them in the comments and I will be sure to do that. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you soon.